You are welcome to my presentation on working capital management. In this presentation, I'll be looking at the management of inventory as a component of working capital management. What do we mean by inventory control? Inventory control. Inventory control is the method of ensuring that the right quantity and quality of the relevant stock is available at the time, at the right time, and at the right place. It's a method of ensuring that the right quantity and quality of the relevant stock is available at the right time and at the right place. What are the costs of the inventory? Cost of inventories. Cost of inventories include number one, we have the purchase cost or purchase price. We have ordering cost. We have carrying cost. Another, another one for carrying cost is holding cost. Holding cost. Then we have stock out cost. Stock out cost. And we also have uh, setup cost. These are costs that may be incurred in connection with the inventory. I therefore want to look at this cost one after the other. So, number one, let me start with the purchase price. Purchase price is the actual amount or price at which the inventory is acquired. Purchase price, purchase price is the price at which the inventory is acquired or bought from the suppliers. The price at which the inventory is bought from the suppliers. Number two, we have the ordering cost. Ordering cost. Ordering costs are cost in killed in placing the order up to the point of receiving the goods into the warehouse. Ordering costs are cost in killed in placing the order up to the point of receiving the goods into the warehouse. Ordering costs include number one, we have the purchase costs should also form part of the ordering cost. Purchase cost is part of it. Cost of transportation, transportation cost, transportation cost. The cost of issuing purchase order, cost of issuing the purchase order. Cost of issuing the purchase order. The cost of loading and offloading. Cost of loading and offloading. Cost of loading and offloading. At the point of purchase, the items or stocks or goods may be loaded into the vehicle. A certain amount will be incurred. Cost in care in connection with the loading of the item from part of the ordering cost. And when this goods reaches your destination, then it will be offloaded from the vehicle. Those people that will offload it will also be paid. The cost of offloading it also form part of the cost of order. Cost of getting payment to the suppliers. Cost of getting payment to the suppliers. Cost of getting payment 
to the suppliers. It forms part of cost of order, cost of getting payment to the suppliers. Then we also have cost of communication. You'll be making a phone call. Please ensure my goods are delivered. Ensure it reaches or it, it is delivered not later than this so time. So the cost in key or cost of communication form part of ordering cost. Cost of communication. Cost of communication. It form part of the ordering cost. So now how can the ordering cost be calculated? Calculation of total ordering cost. To calculate the total ordering cost, total ordering cost is equal to number of order times cost per order. Total ordering, ordering cost equals to number of order, number of order times cost per order. This will give you the total ordering cost. And to get the number of order, we are number of order, number of order. That will be demand, demand over quantity. In most cases, your EOQ, economic order quantity, may be used. So we are going to consider the EOQ later. That is the calculation of ordering cost. Number two cost of inventory, which I'm going to examine, is the carrying cost. Carrying, carrying cost. Another word for carrying cost is holding cost. Holding cost. Carrying cost or holding cost are cost in Kyoto. Whenever a material is stored. Cost in kill, whenever materials is stored. That is the cost of providing storages. I have told you that carrying costs are costing killed whenever a material is stored. So carrying costs include number one, cost of capital tied down. Number two, insurance and audit cost. Insurance and audit cost. Cost of warehouse upkeep. Warehouse upkeep. Cost of store labors. Cost of store labor and administrative cost. Cost of store labor. Store labor and administrative cost. And administrative cost. Then we also have storage cost. Storage cost. Storage costs include the uh, rent. Then we also have cost of documentation, number six. Cost of documentation. Cost of documentation. Number seven, we have uh, interest on money borrowed to buy stock. Interest on money borrowed to buy stock. Interest of money borrowed to buy stock. Number eight, deterioration and obsolescence. Deterioration and obsolescence. All this form part of the holding cost or carrying cost. I've told you that the expenses in cure 
when goods are stored in the warehouse are said to be the carrying cost or holding cost. Now, calculation of calculation of holding cost. Or calculation of carrying cost. Holding cost or total total holding cost or total carrying cost. That is average quantity. Average quantity times carrying cost cost per unit. Or times holding cost per unit. Average quantity is your quantity over 2 or your EOQ over 2 times carrying cost per unit or holding cost per unit. We are CO is the holding cost. C CH I mean is holding cost. CH is holding cost. We are Q is your quantity. In some cases, it may be your EOQ. And I'm going to consider that in this lecture. Now, after carrying cost or holding cost, the number three cost I'm going to examine is stock out cost. Stock out cost. Stock out cost are cost incurred when customer demand cannot be met. Because the stock is exhausted. The cost incurred when customers' demand cannot be met because the stock is exhausted. That is stock out cost. Number four, we have set up cost. Set up cost. Set up cost are cost incurred when goods are manufactured internally. Cost incurred when goods are manufactured internally are said to be the set of cost. Now, what are the relevant costs of inventory? Total relevant cost. The two major costs associated with inventory are ordering cost and carrying cost. Therefore, Total relevant cost, total relevant cost equal to total ordering cost plus total holding cost. Total holding cost. After that, total relevant cost, we are TRC, total relevant cost equal to total ordering cost. After the total ordering cost is number of order. And to obtain the number of order, I say it is demand over Q times cost per order or ordering cost per unit, cost per order. Plus total holding cost, I say it is average quantity, which is Q over 2 times holding cost per unit. This will give you the total relevant cost of inventory. The quantity that will minimize this cost is said to be the economic order quantity. That is the one we are going to examine now. I've told you that the quantity to order that we keep this cost, keep them at the minimum. That we keep this cost at the minimum. That quantity is known as economic order quantity. Economic order quantity, EOQ. What is economic order quantity? Economic order quantity is the level of activity at which the cost of inventory control is minimized. The level of, the level of activity at which the cost of inventory control is minimized. I'm telling you that for the EOQ to be arrived at, you want to minimize the total relevant inventory cost. And I'm telling you that the relevant inventory costs are cost of ordering, 
or uh, cost of placing order and the holding cost. So, EOQ formula or mode EOQ. The formula is two times demand cost of placing order over holding cost. Where D is annual demand. D equals to annual demand. It's annual demand. We have a given monthly demand. We have to multiply by 12. And if it is uh, daily demand, you multiply by 365. And where it is weekly demand, you multiply by 52 weeks. Unless otherwise stated. D is annual demand. The CO is the cost per order. Cost of placing each order. YCH is the holding cost. Holding cost. I've told you that holding cost can also be called carrying cost. That is the formula for calculating the EOQ. EOQ is economic, economic order quantity. So this is the EOQ model. So I want to consider some examples. So example one. Example one. A company requires 1,000 units of material X per month. The cost per order is $30 regardless of the size of the order. The holding costs are $2.88 per unit per annum required. Investigate the total cost of buying the material in quantities of 400, 500, or 600. 600 units at one time. What is the cheapest option? Use the EOQ formula to prove your answer is correct. So this question is obtained from Kepler Financial Management Study Test. Now, let's have the solution. Solution. You have different order quantities of 400, 500, and 600. Other quantity. 400, 500, and 600. I'll tell you that EOQ is the calculated order quantity that minimizes ordering cost and carrying cost. That means to calculate the EOQ, you need to determine the total ordering cost and the total holding cost or carrying cost. So to get the ordering cost, I'll tell you that ordering cost is number of order times cost per order. That means you will need the number of order. And the number of order is demand over quantity. Don't forget, I've told you that this demand should be must be annual demand, not monthly demand. But if you look at the demand you are given, you are given a company requires 1,000 units of material X per month. That's to show that this demand is per month. Therefore, you will need to convert your demand to an annual demand by multiplying by 12. Therefore, 1,000 times 12 will give us 12,000. So, if you have the 12,000 as your demand over your quantity, the quantity you are given here is 400. So, 12,000 divided by 400. Don't forget, 12,000 is the product of 1,012. So, 12,000 divided by 400, that gives us 30. That means we have 30 others. Then, 12,000 divided by 500. That gives us 24 others. Then 12,000 divided by 600. That equally gives us 20 others. This is the number of others. Then, I told you that to calculate the holding cost. Holding cost. I said it's average quantity, which is Q over 2 times holding cost per unit. Our our Q, don't forget, it is 12,000. Sorry. We are given Q. When it is 400, this is your quantity. Other quantity, 400. 
400 divided by 2, that gives us 200. 500 divided by 2, that gives us 250. 600 divided by 2, that is 300. So, this one is 600 over 2, giving us 300. This is 500 over 2, giving us 250. This one is 400 over 2, giving us 200. Now, you want to calculate the total relevant cost amount in dollar, in US dollar. Therefore, total relevant cost. Now, total ordering cost. Total, total ordering cost. I said it is number of order, and the number of order is demand over Q times cost per order. Now, let's go back to the question. The holding cost are 2.88. The cost per order is $30. This is the cost per order, $30. If the cost per order is $30, this one is $30. Then, I will have got your D over Q. D over Q here is 30. 30 times 30, that gives us 900. That means the total ordering cost here is 900. Why this one will be 24 times ordering cost. 24 times 30. That gives us 720. This one is 20 times 30. That gives us 600. This is the total ordering cost. After ordering cost, we have total holding cost. Total holding cost. Remember, I told you that holding cost is the same as carrying cost. Therefore, holding cost, I said it is average quantity, which is Q over 2, times holding cost per unit. And let's go back to the question. You were told the holding cost are $2.88 per unit per annum. This is the holding cost, which is $2.88. This one is $2.88. Therefore, and you have got your, a, uh, your Q over 2. Which is 200, 250, and 300 for uh, respectively. Therefore, 200, which is Q over 2, which is 200 times 2.88, which is our holding cost. 200 times 2.88, that gives us 576. Then, 250 times 2.88, that gives us. 720 as well. Then, 300 times 2.88, that gives us uh, 300 times 2.88. We have 864. You now sum up this cost in order to get the total relevant cost. Total relevant cost. I've told you that total relevant cost is the total ordering cost plus total holding cost. When you sum up this, it will be 1,476. This one gives us 1,440. This one gives us 1,464. Now, if you look at the cost, the list is 1,440. This is the list. Now, back to the question. The question will find that required. Investigate the total cost of buying the material in quantities of 400, 500, or 600 units at one time. What is the cheapest option? The cheapest option is this. That means it is the quantity of 500 that gives us the cheapest cost or cheapest option. Remember, I told you that the EOQ is the calculated order quantity that minimizes the ordering cost and the holding cost. Therefore, what is now our economic order quantity? Our EOQ is the quantity with the cheapest cost. Therefore, our EOQ is 500 units. So, our EOQ equals to 500 units. So that is the solution to the question 
using the tabula, tabula approach. But to use the EOQ formula to prove your answer is correct. The EOQ model or EOQ formula is equals to 2 times demand, CO, which is ordering cost, and holding cost. I've told you that your demand must be for the whole year. Therefore, our demand. Demand you are given is 1,000 units, which is per, per month. Therefore, you need an annual demand. 1,000 times 12, giving us 12,000 units. That is our annual demand. Our ordering cost, cost per order. The cost per order is $30. 30 US dollar. And the holding cost. Our holding cost is the holding cost are $2.88. $2.88. I've told you that you may call it carrying cost as well. So, our uh, EOQ, you now substitute into this formula. Square root of 2 times your annual demand, and that is 12,000. Our D is 12,000. Times CO, our CO ordering cost, $30 over holding cost which is 2.88 2 times 12,000 times 30 divided by 2.88 that gives us 250,000 the square root of 250,000 if you find the square root of 250,000 that gives us 500 500 units. Therefore, EOQ is 500 units. Both the formula method and the algebraic method give the same. Example 2. Monthly demand for a product is 10,000 units. The purchase price is $10 per unit. And the company's cost of finance is 15% per annum. Warehouse storage cost per unit per annum are two dollar per unit. The supplier charges two hundred dollar per order for the delivery. Calculate the EOQ. This question is also obtained from Kaplan Financial Management Study Test. This is a study test. Now let's have the solution. Solution. Now. The formula for calculating the EOQ is square root of 2 times D multiplied by CO over holding cost, where D is the annual demand. I've told you that D is annual demand. We were given monthly demand for a product is 10,000 units. Since it is per month, we multiply by 12 times 12, that gives us 120,000 units. The purchase price is $10 per unit. This is the purchase price. And the company cost of finance is 15% per annum. The cost of finance is cost of capital. I've told you that cost of capital tied down is one of the holding costs. Then, warehouse storage cost per unit is, uh, per unit per annum are $2. So, storage cost is also part of the holding cost. Our holding cost now, we have the storage cost of $2 per unit plus cost of finance, which is 15%. 15% of the unit price of $10. So if you calculate 10% of, I mean 15% of $10, that gives us 1.5 plus 2. So the holding cost is. 3.5 dollar. That is the holding cost. The supplier charges 200 dollar per order for the delivery. This is the ordering cost. Ordering cost is 200 dollar. Calculate the EOQ. Our you now substitute into the EOQ formula. EOQ economic order quantity equal to square root of 2 times annual demand 
and our other demand is 120,000 units times the ordering cost, CO is ordering cost, which is $200 over holding cost, which is 3.5. So, 2 times 120,000 times 200 divided by 3.5. That gives us Thirteen thousand, thirteen million, seven hundred and fourteen thousand, two eighty-five point seven one. So when you find the square root of this, the square root of this gives us, therefore, EOQ approximately equal to three thousand seven o td units per order. So that is our economic order quantity. So this is the end of this part. My next presentation I will examine the EOQ with discount and the control levels. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching Ezekiel.